Good afternoon to you. I'm Danilo Evangelista, and welcome to our tropical weather video for today, June 30th, 2024. We have a lot to go over today, including major hurricane barrel and the potential that we might have Chris 2 before the day is over. And later to, and later on with the modeling, we're going to go over 96L, which is in the MDR once again. And it also looks like another threat potentially once we get barrel done with um, for the Caribbean islands. It's very stressful, I know but it's something we have to talk about and it is definitely something in the cards. Unusual and quite literally unprecedented activity for late June um, right now, especially with barrel. So let's get started with it. Starting off with the National Hurricane Center homepage, I'm gonna start here so I could actually be able to um, move the cursor over so we could see the information for barrel. And the maximum sustained winds right now, it is once again, we all know it by now, but it is a major hurricane. It is a category four hurricane. Barrel is now the strongest hurricane on record for the month of June by the standpoint of wind speed. Um, not quite bro broken the pressure yet for, or broken the record yet for the um, central pressure, but it, I'm pretty sure it'll get there soon. Minimum central pressure is 960 millibars. And if you're tracking it, it, it is at 10.9 north. 55.6 west and it is moving west still with gaining some latitude at 21 miles per hour and then this is the other area we're watching invest 94l recon went into it and the national hurricane center now has this as a very high chance that it'll probably become tropical depression or even a tropical storm later today before it moves into mexico and word on the street is that the ATCF monitoring system already has Invest 94L as a tropical depression. And I'll show you in a moment, Recon did find tropical storm force winds within 94L, or at least borderline tropical storm force winds. So it's not out of the realm of possibility, once again, that we have tropical storm Chris before the night is over. So there you go. Another um, one major hurricane on one day and then another named storm um, as well to go on top of it quite the unusual activity once again for um this time of year it is not even july yet and we're already looking at our first major hurricane in the atlantic with hurricane barrel it is quite quite literally history in the making and just to put into perspective how rare hurricane barrel is um philip klotzbach tweeted this on twitter it's x officially but i still call it twitter it'll always be twitter to me um, hurricane Barrel is now a Category 4 hurricane with maximum sustained winds of 130 miles per hour. The earliest calendar year Atlantic Category 4 hurricane on record. The old Atlantic record for the earliest Category 4 hurricane was Hurricane Dennis in the infamous year of 2005 on July 8th. So we broke the record by a good um, seven or eight days, a good week. We broke the record for Barrel by... And unfortunately, it is just a massive storm. Well, massive in terms of its potential devastation, but it is a compact storm in terms of its actual size. But it is a potentially devastating storm in the making for the Windward Islands. And I'll just show you it on satellite. That I remember when I said this morning, sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. This is definitely one of those moments. Um, you can see convective bursts wrapping around the eye of Hurricane Barrel, which is now... Um, pretty well defined. So this is probably intensifying. And as I said earlier, it would not shock me if we have a mid to high end category four by the time it gets to the Windward Islands tomorrow morning. Um, the National Hurricane Center certainly forecasts a major hurricane to remain um, as it moves through the islands and probably a decent bit into the Caribbean as well. Hurricane warnings are in effect for all, basically all of the Windward Islands, uh, Barbados, Tobago, um, St. Lucia, um, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, all of those areas are in a hurricane warning right now. And let's actually take a look at the public advisory and just really quickly read out all the warnings. Um, a hurricane warning is in effect for Barbados, St. Lucia, so we got that, St. Vincent and the Grenadine Islands, Gr and Grenada and Tobago. So we listed all the hurricane warning areas. A tropical storm warning is in effect for Martinique. And they also have tropical storm watches in effect for Dominica and Trinidad now. I know there was some people worrying about the fact that Trinidad was not in a watch yet, but they are in now a tropical storm watch. Only likely to get tropical storm force winds, Tobago's over here, so or, or Tobago's here, Trinidad is down here. 
um, and they're most likely to probably just get some of the tropical storm force winds with barrel, but nonetheless, it is likely to be an intense storm, much more intense probably for Tobago, and I'm definitely eyeing at this point on its current track. If we kind of take a line through it, I'm eyeing either Grenada or potentially some of the Grenadine Islands to be under the line of fire for the direct landfall of Hurricane Barrel, and it'll probably do so as a mid to high end category four um, sometime tomorrow. That's what I believe. Although obviously the official National Hurricane Center forecast is what we should go by. And let's actually see what they have this peaking at. Gotta uh, see the forecast discussion really quickly. Yeah, they, they agree with me. Mid category four hurricane, um, National Hurricane, Specs, Hurricane Center expects 140 miles per hour. I wouldn't even be shocked if this gets to 150 miles per hour. We'll just have to see, though, on that. Um, but the key message is, though, regardless, obviously, with Hurricane Burrow, it is obviously going to be a Category 4 or at least a major hurricane no matter what. Um, this is a very dangerous situation, and residents in these areas should listen to government and emergency management officials. All preparations should be rushed to completion today. So if you're not begin to rep prepare yet for um, barrel, you should absolutely do so right now. Um, and honestly, if you haven't started preparing, I don't know what to tell you because we've been talking about this all throughout last week that we're potential that we were potentially looking at a tropical system heading into the islands as we head into the early portion of next week. So tomorrow. So the warnings have been out there for quite a bit of time. We've been talking about the potential for an, a risk. Um, and if and if you have still not chosen to believe or prepare for it yet, uh, I don't know what to tell you at this point. I believe there's still a little bit of time if people are trying to book flights or leave at the last minute from any of these islands. I still believe there is time. I'm not sure though, but I know that the airports do close in the Windward Island and all across the entire Windward Islands um, by the end of tonight. Um, and but and then after that, I'm pretty sure at that point you're probably just stuck wherever you are and are probably just forced to ride out the storm. So if you're going to ride out the storm, if you're going to go ride out barrel, I suggest that you prep prepare now and rush those preparations to completion tonight, since that's when we're be, when we're going to expect tropical storm force conditions to begin over the islands. Um, and obviously, given that barrel is a Category 4 storm, it'll potentially bring hurricane force winds, life-threatening storm surge, damaging, wa damaging waves are expected over portions of the Windward Islands since, it's a, since it is a very strong hurricane. And obviously, uh, there will be the highest risk of the core. Um, as I said, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Grenada beginning early Monday morning, and obviously those those areas are in a hurricane morning. There's also the risk for heavy rainfall. Areas potentially could see locally up to six to 10 inches of rain in some areas, maybe even more. This is a tropical cyclone after all, so there's the flooding threat, with the storm surge, and also the rainfall as well. It is not just the wind that is the killer, and that's really something that a lot of people tend to miss. And it should have been a very clear-cut thing that we've seen as a reoccurring theme in a, many of our storms over the last recent years is that flooding really tends to be sometimes the biggest killer and the biggest damage causer, not even the wind. The wind obviously is going to be a threat with this storm, especially since it is a Category 4 hurricane. But the wind, but those sort of winds are only going to be in the eye wall. And in a case where barrel, where it is a compact storm, um, there will only be a handful amount of people that will actually experience the Category 4 winds. But the rain field of the storm will basically be as expansive as the storm is. So the rain is what's going to be the more widespread impact. And it will not just be confined to one or two islands like what the major hurricane force winds will be. So that is going to be a very big threat as well. And you definitely also need to keep that in mind as Barrel moves through. And then obviously everybody's going to be wondering what Barrel will be doing after that as we get into the Caribbean. That's something we're going to have to focus at, focus on at another time. Over the next 24 hours, we really need to, fo we need to focus on impacts that are going to happen imminently um, very soon. So that is a kind of quick sum up with Barrel. 
Don't want to forget about this, though. This is Invest 94L in the Bay of Campeche, as I did mention earlier. Recon did actually go into the system, and they did find that this is indeed potentially already a tropical depression. That's at least what the ATCF has um, as of 3 o'clock, but they did also find tropical storm force winds, and I actually have the recon data for Invest 94L. Um, pay attention to this top right graph here. This is the SFMR. Um, which basically measures the surface winds, um, I believe every 10 minutes or so. Um, and this graph right here, this line right here is what I want you to pay attention to because this is where the SFMRs are 35 knots or above, meaning tropical storm force winds are being measured by the SFMR. And notice how often we go above tropical storm force um, with these F SFMRs. So that means Recon was definitely able to find gale force winds within this system. Um, also flight level winds do barely support that as well. I think the highest flight level um, wind that was reported was around 43 knots. So blending that together should generally get the idea that we might have a tropical storm on our hands, although it is a weak one. Um, the Recon that went into um, 94L, I was about to say Chris, although it might be Chris at five o'clock. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see though. It wouldn't shock me in the very least. Um, but you can see though, it is a very broad tropical cyclone. Um, I'll show you back on the satellite in a, just a moment, but this is what the recon found. Um, usually we look for, in terms of recon, finding whether or not a system is a tropical cyclone, we look for one area that is defined and has a closed low level center. Well, this is a closed low level center, but look at how wide it encompasses on the recon. It is a very broad storm. Um, so obviously that explains the satellite image that it looks that it, it potentially is a tropical system, but you do notice it is a messy one. Um, it is definitely not gonna be a pretty system, but like Barrel does have, this will also have the impact um, for heavy rain, especially over Mexico, that, that's that been getting um, multiple of these systems on end. We've had Alberta last week, and then we also had another invest area, and it looks like they're just not going to get the end of it um, with this storm. And you can see convective bursts blowing up right now over the coast of Mexico. So they're going to get heavy rain, probably some gusty winds as well, especially since there are some tropical storm force winds supported in this storm. So we might have Chris at five o'clock. And that might as well, as we round out the month of June, we might as well have our our third named storm um, in the books. Even if not, it's already incredible just the amount of activity we've gotten in the month of June so far. We had this storm, um, this 94L. Um, and keep in mind, our first invest from this hurricane season was recorded this month. We had, so that means seven invests so far. Um, if you're counting 90 to 96, it is seven, not six, because you're counting the zero two. Um, just got to keep, just got to throw that out there just in case if people are a little confused. But um, we've had seven invests so far, two of them, potentially three now, going to become named storms. And this all happened from basically mid-June onward. And we're not even into July yet, and we already have one of these invests which spawned our first major hurricane of the season. I mean, it's just not every season that you really get this, and it is quite literally going to be a sign of things to come. Um, but I will say, if you've been following me for the last several weeks or so, we saw this coming. The upper atmospheric pattern looked favorable, as well as the months we've been talking about how warm the Atlantic is relative to normal. And now we're all seeing it play out in front of our eyes. And it seems like we're not going to get the end of it because let's take a look at the GFS run, um, move it out over the next um, 24 hours. You can see Barrow moves through the Windward Islands. I will not even focus on the GFS intensity um, right now because it got, it got it all completely wrong. Obviously, it's not going to be because the GFS has it right now at 981 millibars, not even anywhere near how strong it is right now. So I wouldn't even pay attention to the GFS intensity, but it moves through the Windward Islands as a hurricane. Um, then it moves into the Caribbean. Seems like the GFS has more of a scenario where it goes a little bit on the northern side of the intensity guidance of the track guidance, potentially putting more places like Jamaica 
and even the Dominican Republic and Haiti. So the island of Hispaniola in general, we'll just call it that, Hispaniola at risk. But notice what happens after Barrow. Um, it is that other area of interest that we saw in the MDR that also has a high risk as well, that it's Invest Area 96L. Um, and as you can see, that also moves into the Caribbean. Um, a weak to moderate tropical storm is what the GFS shows, and that's slightly weaker than the earlier runs, and then it eventually intensifies once again in the Eastern Caribbean. So we're not going to see the end of it with the islands, and this is roughly around Wednesday into Thursday when we start looking at it. Um, and then as we head towards the next um, five days, GFS brings Barrow into the Yucatan Peninsula, extend that out to the next seven days. Um, it seems like the GFS puts this into the Gulf of Mexico. It's a little bit too far down the line to see really what happens with Barrel, but maybe this could be another thing we need to watch in the Bay of Campeche, or this might be something for the Gulf Coast to watch as well. But I will tell you, if you are watching from the Gulf Coast and if you do have any concerns about Barrel, it is still at least a week away before we actually have any sort of idea of what kind of impact Barrel will be to the United States. I know, especially after the last four years um, in the Gulf Coast, we've, we've been just getting storm after storm after storm there. So we'll have to watch the progress of Barrel. We'll have to see exactly what it does, especially as it survives the Caribbean. But I'm just going to tell you right now, this intensity guidance, barely having it as a um, moderate tropical storm, maybe strong tropical storm in the Western Caribbean. Definitely not sure if I buy that, especially given that the GFS once again, it shows it at 981 millibars right now um, when it's 960s and probably in the 950s even um, as it's heading into the Caribbean and it's a category four storm already. But once again, we also have that other area that moves through the Caribbean as well. That's 96L and we're only on July 4th. And this is probably if, 90, if 94L does indeed become Chris this afternoon, um, this 96L, that would probably be Debbie and we'll barely be into the month of July, and we're already be on our fourth named storm this hurricane season. Incredible, especially given that we only just got Alberta last week, and now we're already dealing with Barrel, which is a major hurricane. Might have to deal with Chris and soon Debbie as well. It's just an incredible season that we've had so far, and we're not even into July yet. We're still on the last day of June, and it makes you wonder just how active things are going to get as we head into um, the peak season, I can only imagine it's going to get more active from here. And this is definitely on track, probably at this point, to be one of the top five, maybe even three, historic Atlantic hurricane seasons. If we continue to get this kind of activity throughout the rest of the season, I would not be shocked, though, because the only, the only other years that we've seen something, especially with the likes of Barrel, or we've seen something similar to Barrel, um, in the um, MDR is storms from 1933 and 2005, where we had anything close to what Barrel is going to do in the Caribbean for this time of year. And we know 1933 was the most active hurricane season for ACE, in fact, has the, the highest ACE recorded in a single Atlantic hurricane season. And obviously, we know how legendary 2005 is in terms of its activity. So, there's definitely lots more activity to come, activity to come, especially this upcoming week. It's definitely not going to be a boring week at all. I'm going to tell you that for sure. And before it's all said and done, it looks like we have more to watch on top of Barrel too. So we're going to keep up all with this. Um, for the five o'clock advisory, I might do a live stream this afternoon on Barrel just to see how things go. I um, also got to see how I feel because if you were on my live stream last night, I do apologize apologize if I sounded a little off and was not really feeling that great and was also really tired, but I'll try to be um, as energetic as possible um, for tonight where we're going we're to talk about Barrel. We're going to talk about the five o'clock advisory. Also going to try to focus a little bit more on long range Barrel. And we'll also probably talk about um, some of our other invest areas too. And maybe if by five o'clock we do indeed get Chris, we'll probably talk about that as well. So if you want to see that, if you want to, uh, if you want to be tuned for that and you're not subscribed to my channel already, I, I strongly recommend that you subscribe now. 
like this video if you enjoyed it and found it informative. Share with family and friends as well. Um, Got to get the information out, especially if you have um, family, friends, or loved ones in the islands tonight. Um, let them get get for the information them if they're not well aware yet. They probably are, but um, definitely inform them of Hurricane Barrel coming their way and also on this potential 96 cell, which also might be a threat for the islands um, down the line later next week as well. With that being said, stay safe. Um, have a blessed rest of your day. Um, peace, love, and kindness to you all. And we'll talk again very soon.